Project Sapient is a podcast meant to engage our brothers and sisters in the law enforcement and military communities in conversations that we all know we need to have. All opinions you hear are our own, and they are protected by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. They are in no way reflect or meant to reflect the opinion of any specific agency, officer, or service member. Some opinions may be controversial. The center discretion is advised. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Project Sapient. We are actually in a very special location up here in New Hampshire today to record our second in-person episode. So (laughs) this is our second one. (laughs) But we are here at the SIG SAR Academy at the SIG Experience Center. And man, it's awesome here. Yeah, this this, (laughs) this place has been pretty phenomenal. It's been about it's about two years old now. And when I, when I first came up here to get a look at this place, I'd always heard about the Sig Sauer Academy and all the amazing training and opportunities they have here. And then yep. coming out here and being able to be part of it has been like quite an adventure. Oh yeah. To see this place and where you hear stories about where it was Yeah, 20 something years ago, just a couple of card tables and a, in a berm and a mom and pop gun shop. And then you see this, it's like 400 acres yeah. that they have of all ranges. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's amazing, amazing place. And for you, for our listeners, Definitely come up here, take their classes, even come through the Experience Center. Check out everything they got, man. I mean, it's, it's I call it like Disneyland for adults, pretty <laughs> much. You know, when you come up here because of all the different things you can do when you're, when you're up here. But without further ado, I'm sure everyone's wondering, who am I talking to right now? But first, quick uh, shout out to our uh, supporters out there, Habit Journal, who you guys all know I write a shit ton for. Actually, just had a few recent publications. If you go on happyjournal.com and check them out, type my name in the search, and you'll see some of my latest that I've written. And also, 22 Mohawks, preventing first responder and veteran suicide through empowering and helping them find that sense of purpose. And also, our friends at the Second Mission Foundation, where they elevate and educate our uh, veteran community for their second mission, what they find to do after service. So... uh, so we are here again at SIG Academy with Gavin, Gavin w- Wegman, right? Wageman. Wageman, sorry. It's okay, man. <laughs> Gavin it's Wageman. It to, yeah, it's yeah. A, people butcher my name every day, so I'm like, I'm so used to it. But yeah, Gavin Wageman, a quick little bio on him. Yeah, Gavin is a former U.S. Marine artillery MNC fellow, fellow red leg right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two deployments and also went to the, looks like Army National Guard mm-hmm. in Vermont. And you did two deployments, one with the Marine, one with the Army. Or- Both with Marines. Both with Marines. Okay. And then you were a police community service officer, mm-hmm. nightclub bartender and bouncer. <laughs> you're a first degree BJJ black belt, and currently you're a range safety officer working at the SIG Experience Center up here in Epping, New Hampshire. Yeah. So, which I like your dedication in terms of, you know, working alongside uh, SIG Academy leadership to help guide the Academy's growth into the fight and combatives world. And I love the dedication that you have in shifting, you know, the idea of firearm ownership from a luxury skill set to a necessary form of kind of like in the martial arts, right? Yeah. Where, you know, me and you talk a yeah. lot about, you know, Tennis and Bushido and, yep. and a lot of the more philosophical. Yeah, I love talking philosophy. You know, you know because, it, well, if, if to me, if you are, I mean, I told you before, if you're practicing the martial arts just to practice and never really study it, you're not getting the full experience, right? If you're not reading, you know, Miyato Musashi, reading some of the greatest samurais or yeah, Sun Tzu, even Sun Tzu uh, if you're not reading yeah. any of those to really Marcus understand, Aurelius. yeah, Mark Aurelius, to really understand what it means to be what we'll call modern day warrior, right? Where, you know, the, the, the stigma of the, your common public is all oh, warriors, the type that, you know, kick indoors and all kinds of shit. Like, you know, this aggressive Viking looking type. It's deeper. It's much, it's deeper. much deeper. Than exactly. That. And, and that's something that, 
you know, the, the common individual, even those who aren't really tuned into it, just don't understand that part of the martial arts. So with you kind of viewing this idea through the lens of the martial arts and fit, physical fitness education, you kind of have, you, you believe that that's a way to move forward kind of for the survival of the second amendment literally is, and to unite yep. all these tenets yeah. that we've learned over the years and that we see in practice of the martial arts and bring it into this world, mm -hmm. whether it's you know, a six hour academy and to really bring and hone in those skill sets for everybody, essentially not just law enforcement or military, but there's more for everybody mm -hmm. to study what it means to be kind of like this holistic type warrior where you study everything kind of all around encompassing type guy. Yeah, you have an answer for, yeah. for everything that comes, whether it's from, whether it's you're fighting for your life at a long distance yep. or you're having a conversation, you're literally having a debate yep. with a friend. There's all, it's all conflict and it's all at a different scale, but, yep. but, but there's tenets that apply to all of them exactly. about respecting your opponent. Yeah. Making sure you respect the person that might be trying to defeat you to yep. work on yourself, not just, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally and learning how to control your impulses, learning how to understand your opponent's, behavior by getting into their shoes and and knowing where they might be coming from you want a water by the way we no, have I'm some water good. back here okay yeah no i appreciate uh, it i appreciate it so yeah there's so much more to being a warrior than just the physical fitness and knowing how to kick a door down and have the i like to put it like you like you can have the heart and and the and the instinct to know how to fight and kill it doesn't mean you know how to do it. Yeah. And, and that's, and, and the, in the journey and the saga of every person's journey, every person's adventure into learning how to defend themselves. There is that, there's that moment where they start to find this internal peace yeah. that gives them that level of confidence and control over their emotions and control over themselves on the worst days of their life. And yeah. I think that's something that is, is we're getting further and further away from. Yeah. And I, and I want to do, this is me coming here to this academy is the beginning of me doing everything I can to try to, to try to shift that direction. And it, and it's, it's, you know, I believe a lot of people here at SIG also see the, 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 the same, the same idea. Yep. Like literally the whole reason I came out here in the first place was because a SIG Sauer video doc, seven part video documentary called SIG empower the people. And yep. it was, I highly recommend you watch it. it came yep. out September 20th, 2020. And it, 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 honestly felt like this SIG Academy took, I've always been very passionate about helping people yep. be prepared for the worst days of their lives. Yep. Like whether that's, you know, like I said, mental, physical, whatever. And I felt like SIG just took the ball out of my hands and just disappeared into the horizon <laughs> with it. And I was like, I gotta catch up. Yeah, I gotta yeah. catch up to yeah. you, man. How did you do that? Yeah. Just in a video, I felt like it was taken from me. And I yeah. was like, okay, that's the place to go. That's yeah. the place to go to continue this journey. This At this point, I had been training in jiu-jitsu for I don't know, maybe seven, eight, eight or nine years, maybe. And then I saw SIG have this thing. And I, and I started researching SIG. I started researching the academy. I was looking at all the instructors and who knew jujitsu. If, if any of them had jujitsu, would there be any sort of like landing strip for me to to find as I traveled out here with my family? Yeah. And, and that was another process, like convincing my family, like my, my wife and, and all this wonderful communities I have back home that like, I, I, I have to, I have to go this way. Like yeah. I'm, I'm called to be here yeah. for the next, for the next chapter of what my purpose is. Yeah. And it's fully, it's fully in here. See, that's, that, that's the, the kind of the amazing part is that I find with a lot of us veterans is after we get out is kind of honing in that sense of purpose that we, we built, right? Because, you know, once we're done with war and like I got medically discharged. So once we are all done with that and you come back and you're like, all right, what the fuck am I going to do now? <laughs> you know, yeah. and, you know, and, and all of us, I think that have been there realized at some point when we actually looked internally is, and it, it took a lot of others to tell me this is the experience we says we've experienced at war or whatever else throughout our lives can really turn into instruction for the next generation of warriors or whatever, because yeah, 20 years of, of GWAT really, you know, exhausted us, 
But at the same time, the lessons learned and the type of people that came out of it are truly incredible. And some of the people that, that you and I both know, you know, some like you know, Kyle Lamb or even Chuck Ritter, Command Sergeant Major exactly. Chuck Ritter and Tim Kennedy and all those guys that have really took that mantle and found their second purpose, right? And that's something I see that you did is you found that passion and you ran with it, mm-hmm. right? And SIG kind of pretty much welcomed you into this world to, because they, I'm sure they realize that you have that sense of purpose and that drive to make something happen here at SIG. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that something that- 100%. Yeah. And, and I wasn't the only one. As far as, insofar as the, the development of coming here for me was the, the objective was, like I say in here, is to, is to, the end goal is to get Second Amendment enthusiasts and people that are on the fence about the Second Amendment and even people that hate guns to start shifting the mindset to this is a martial art yeah. and these people who carry these are martial artists and therefore they are, they are becoming peaceful people. Yeah. And so coming here and having that mission and, and even though I didn't really ex- express that to the, to the, that level of degree, cause I'm, I'm never sure if people are going to be able to, to yeah. meet me at that level. They're like, okay, you're getting a little out of, that's a little like <laughs> big yeah. for what you're just an RSO dude chill yeah, out yeah, yeah yeah but I I have been so so lucky to run into people out here that have been sort of developing this program even before I came here to publicly pick up the flag and move forward there yeah. are others that were here before me that have played their part there's there's one guy I'll, I'll refer to him as, yeah. as, as Stellen yeah. Stellen okay he is he likes his privacy but he had this thing running before I, I ever showed up. He actually was running some jujitsu stuff here for a couple of years and it got really, really popular. He did a very good job developing the community and making sure people were learning correctly. And then COVID hit and they had to slow it down. There was another instructor here, Justin Christopher. He's a fourth degree under Pedro Sauer. And I was, I had every intention of being like, okay, there's the guy that's, I got to get to know this guy because this is how we make this happen. And yeah. And and that's how and then as soon as I get here, like I saw the mats that there were these nice rollout mats that were for a modern pugilist course that I believe he developed alongside another black belt instructor that worked for Sig. And then like as I'm still kind of feeling out my area here, they ended up moving further on in their careers, and and I was just like I I sort of as I was here, I started self medicating myself with distractions and 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 different hobbies. Because I felt like I couldn't continue forward without them, yeah. but I ended up falling like kind of like dipping into a depression because, like you said a moment ago, a lot of us veterans like we need purpose, we need to feel like there's something beyond us that we're fighting for. Yeah, and I eventually was just like, okay, enough is enough. I I'm just gonna start going out to. I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna see if I can pick this flag up. I'll start emailing people asking if people are interested. What what resources do I have around me? Yep. And I slowly started to, I just didn't stop every day. It was just, it was to add 1%, move this, move, just push this, reach for the ball 1% more than I did yesterday. And sometimes it would be 5%. Sometimes it'd be more than that. But if I could just put 1% out, I was allowed to put my head down and and sleep. And, and that just continued to snowball. And it, it, and that, those moments looked like things like, you know, I might, I might, it might be the middle of winter and we're out here in Epping, New Hampshire and driving out here was a little, maybe it may have seemed a little dangerous. And I would still like, we would, we might even be like a lot of people went home early, like the storm's coming in yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I got to set up for jujitsu. Cause I have one person that said they were going to make it. Yeah. So I will be here for that. I will yep. be consistent. I will not let this and the, the, you know, I will not let this slip. And yeah. like, and there was actually kind of a, a point of pride of pushing past that, that temptation to just give into what everyone else is doing. Like, I'm just going to go home. Like, I'm, I'm tired, you know, yeah, yeah. I'll just, you know, I'll log out early, but you know, just continuing to push and push and push. But that's, that, that's what's great is uh, like you said, uh, actually, I like that is, you know, you just do that 1% more. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you see people, you know, some of these fitness guys or whatever, you know, just get up, going to the gym, you're halfway there already, you know, whether you don't feel it or you're, you know, whatever. But as soon as you walk through those doors, you're like in, you know, in, in that zone, yep. right. It gets you in that zone. So yeah. that's, that's kind of, that's a good way of looking at it is even, you know, when, when I talk to other, uh, even, you know, within the law enforcement profession, talking to other cops and whatever, and I tell them like, in terms of training, I was like, you know, you become 
one percent better because you decided to dry fire for twenty minutes every night. You know, and I said that that's all it takes. It doesn't take much. You know, but. It's it's adding that skill. I mean, you and I both know in, in the martial arts. I mean, I started when I was in the fifth grade. And in the martial arts, it's like you repeatedly do the punch. You're like, you know, you're sitting there as a kid over and over <laughs> and over. And, and you're like, yeah, how many punches am I getting? You know, yeah. but what am I good at a punch? Exactly. You know, and, and that's the thing. It's 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 I think Bruce Lee was the one who said that he's not afraid of the person who is able to hit you once he's afraid of the one that has practiced thousands of reps and able to connect with you because that is like you know that guy has been practicing for a long time for that one single moment that one single shot that he was able to get you and that's the the scary one right mm-hmm. that, that's the one that will get you so so it's kind of I, I i take that back like into the law enforcement profession where training so important even though you and i both know like you don't get as much training as you think mm-hmm. you know, as the people think but through those repetition of training you're able to be better that much better yeah. that one percent better whether you're reading crim law or even <laughs> philosophy or whatever you know it makes you that much better in in your response to the world that's around you because people never call us on their best day right no. it's always on the worst day yep. so if your mindset's already elevated Right, if you're already like a hundred miles an hour and ne- don't realize, and then you get to the scene and all of a sudden it turns to shit, oh, you might be the problem. You're overloaded. Exactly. You're already, your your amygdala is already it, taken over. Exactly, and and that's where you don't think clearly. So what I like is is with with the concept of bringing BJJ into into this world, right? When you first, I mean, for, we'll kind of take it back to when you first started the program here. I, I remember when I came out here to uh, run training for with the guys over at BJJ Cops, you were just starting off at that trailer, right? And how, what, what well, has, we didn't even have the trailer. Oh, we, had okay. the, we had a, essentially what we used was a conference room. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was right, right next door here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah, had yeah. this really big conference room and tons of tables, tons of chairs. And what I would do for setting up for jujitsu is I would move all 40, 50 of these tables and 60 something chairs. I would push them all to the back of the room. I would roll out every single rollout mat. I would measure and make sure they're all lined, covered yep. and aligned yep. evenly as, as nicely as possible. Then I would tape them all down and then I would clean them and I would do that. We would do class for an hour. And then it, in, I was lucky afterwards uh, as time went on and people started to, to hang out afterwards, they would help me put the room back together, yeah, yeah. but it would be a good, like four hours of time of just being like, okay, from, from the moment I pushed the first chair back to the moment I put that chair, I returned the chair to where it started, you know, putting the room completely back together. It'd be like a good four or five hours yeah. of, of like just having to reassemble a, a conference room because we have some like really high end client coming through the next day. Yeah. So it yeah. started there. It started okay. with, with that. So after you started there, you know, could you, were you able to gauge kind of like people are really digging this kind of, you know, bringing this side or that side of the world to SIG and were people starting to pick up on like, oh yeah, I could see how this is also helpful with my skill set and firearms and stuff like that. It's very easy to sell that. And I, and I've personally have been, have been able to. I can make very strong arguments as to why you should be training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which I'd yeah. love to go into as we're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was very lucky to run into one of the the former director was very supportive of, of the academy. He was very supportive of letting this of just kind of like letting me do my thing and yeah. bringing employees, and they would bring a friend here and there. Yeah. And then he later moved on in his career, and he was his replacement, Phil Strader, who's in charge of the academy now. I mean, he's actually got some, he's got some connections out into the fight world. Some nice. actually very respectable connections. He knows John Jones. He knows always Gracie personally. Like he's got some connections out there and I know he sees, he's the only person I've ran into that doesn't train jujitsu and he sees like 99% of what I see. Good. And, and it's, he's He's been able, and he's, he's helped feed this thing yeah. and helped energize it. And he has even actively been on the mats 
covered in sweat, <laughs> rolling with other people. Like yeah. I've seen it firsthand. It was when Hoist Gracie visited. Yeah. It's it yeah, cool awesome. seeing a train with Hoist. It's cool. <laughs> so I've been, like I said earlier, I've been very lucky to run into those people. So that's how it's, that's how it really started to expand. Okay. Was it had that energy behind it. And I, and, and I'm doing everything I can to show that I'm, I am consistent and I do take this very seriously. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to be trying to guide this ship as far as it possibly can go, whether, you know, taking it through all the storms it inevitably will go through and, and, yeah. you know, making sure any sunny days that come that anyone who's on the ship is, is the first to enjoy them. Yeah. And so it's, there's more to come yeah. as of now, where we are presently now, we now have our own little building. It was formerly the, the, the instructor's trailer. It's where they kept all their equipment and they, you know, they would have lunch in there. And, and I was very lucky to be able to be given that, uh, to be gifted this and, and to be, they, they, they went forth and they spent a substantial amount of money on the best mats that money can buy. Cause I was like, if we're going to do a SIG thing like this, has, you know how it has to be nice. Like yeah. SIG does, it's, it has a saying around here, buy once, cry once. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of Actually, like, I that. like that motto. <laughs> <laughs> buy <laughs> once, cry once, man. It's like, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's going to be worth it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and so they, 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 they put forth the money for the best mats I've ever seen in my whole really? fighting career. Yeah. I love to, yeah. It, it, and so that's set up right now and we're, we're still just kind of getting it. We're still just sort of priming everything mm-hmm. or for public release. So, okay. So the launch is not yet. You're still kind of building it. Yeah. For yeah. The we still have class in there. Okay. We still have class in there right now. You know, no charge. Come on through. Have a good time. But that is going to change at some point down the road. So let's, let's talk about why you should train in BJJ. And my thing is not only with BJJ, but so, like I tell all the guys during roll call, all the guys and gals, like, listen, train in something like get good at something, whether it be judo, mm-hmm. kickboxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, you know, Kempo, right? Whatever, you know, whatever it might be, because those skills that you learn are skills that take you throughout your entire life yes. pretty much. Right. Yeah. I mean, at some point we're going to get older. At some point we're not going to be able to shoot as well as we used to, you know, because that just happens. But a skill that will always is constant is martial arts. It's, it's your own body that you're using and you can see, you know, some of the older, older guys in, in the profession who still have it, right. Who could still kick ass and do all that. But the reason why, and I laugh because I, I, I back up kind of when I first became a cop and I, you know, I was in the mar- doing my martial arts all the time, like three times a week and all that stuff. And I remember I was having a discussion with my Lieutenant at the time when I worked in Boston and I was told that at the time, since the moves or the skills that I have are not sanctioned by the training council, mm-hmm. liability will be- fall on me. If I was to hurt somebody by an unapproved move, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, you know, the bullshit I learned at the Academy, the DT defensive tactics, which, you know, as well as I do, (laughs) none of it, it really works. It's, it, it's, it is. And I I find it that, uh, you know, I was live. I'm like, you know what? The guy who probably created that combatives, it probably never been in a fight in, in their entire lives, you know? And, and. At the time, I ended up having to leave because I'm like, well, I don't want to lose my job over, you know. But I laughed because several years later, all of a sudden, you got this influx. Like, oh, go out there, do BJJ, do this. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> like, this this should have been a no-brainer. Yeah. So, so you know, in, in your way, like, why, why should someone, it, it doesn't have to be law enforcement or military, or whatever, but why does someone... Someone should train in BJJ. I like to start when I try to sell people on this, on, on the easiest thing. All right. I start with the mental aspects of it. Just like you said, it carries on much further in life yeah. than, than, than just the, whatever short amount of time you might be physically able to fight. Yeah. But it's the ability to control that amygdala hijack moment. Yeah. Because when you're microdosing adversity, like you will, you will in every single jujitsu, Muay Thai, judo, any of those at MMA, any of those those top tier fighting arts, you do one class of those, you will be microdosing adversity in a way that will get you very, very close. You'll get as close safely to touching your own death yep. and be able to withdraw every single time you go to class. Yeah. Especially in jujitsu, because jujitsu in particular 
forces its its students to consciously make a choice that they have reached the point of death. Yeah. Which is submission, which yep. is tapping out. Yeah. And that's the whole game is you yep. kill me and I kill you. Whereas in striking matches, like I, I'm going off on a tangent yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah. No, go ahead. Striking matches, it's kind of like I throw a punch at 100% and, yeah. and you get knocked out. Yeah. You didn't really have a choice. You yeah. just went to sleep. Yeah. Whereas jujitsu, it's like my arm's going to break. This is going to break. I'm falling. I'm getting, I'm getting choked out. The world's going. I'm looking through a tunnel. All right, I'm done. Yeah. And you get used to that feeling. And so you gain this ability over, over time doing this where you're okay with, you're okay facing that feeling. And your, your, your amygdala starts to calm down because it's been here so many times that when the time comes and you, you back someone into a corner, maybe they have a knife, maybe they're holding someone hostage. You're thinking clearly right now because earlier that morning or the day before you just had a 280 pound first degree black belt smashing the dog shit out of you and you were your, your brain was trying to panic but you were putting it you you're getting more and more comfortable developing the ability to push back against that adversity and that and that and that that like i said the, that amygdala hijacked moment you can yeah. calm yourself down more and you get your heart rate up you're learning how to control your heart rate in that level of pressure yeah which is one of the things i really enjoyed when you guys came through yeah. that that changed so much in and and thinking about how i can continue to get this martial out further into the world. It was yeah. fascinating to me to watch your program. Everyone, everyone was, was kitted up with their heart monitors and, and before it, like we were out at the range and people were just loading magazines. Yeah. And as their magazines slowly started to get more and more full and they knew the moment of physical exertion and the moment of shooting and potential danger and things could go wrong, feeling that, that fight or flight moment was coming. Yep. You, you called me over. I never forgot this. You're like, Gav, come here. Show me. And you show me that little yeah. panel and you're like, like, look at these numbers. Like, these are people who likely maybe not have, they're not accustomed to this just yet. Like, yep. this is, they're getting nervous. And you, yeah, I was watching, <laughs> like, some of their heart rates were slowly oh, yeah. going up. And some yeah. of them were, were calm, yeah. completely cool and calm. And it's such a fascinating thing. But that was the, that's so I think that's the greatest thing you're going to get from, to go back to what you said, yeah. uh, for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and why people should learn is that ability to control yourself in those moments where you, your life is on the line. Yeah. Because Jiu Jitsu, Con forces you to consciously touch that that moment and then and you can explore it as much as you want you yeah. can stay there and not tap out and let your arm break i, I, I know you, plenty of <laughs> we, i know we i'm know, not gonna tap yeah, out yeah, we, snap. We know plenty, uh, yeah exactly <laughs> we know plenty of tough you know, guys stuff guys yeah, stubborn yeah. that just like nope nope crack you're i like, do oh, not crack. tap ever yeah All right yeah. well you're gonna go to the hospital yeah exactly I'm sorry <laughs> have fun for the next six months in a wheelchair <laughs> yeah exactly but yeah so there's that and then there is the physical aspect and i i, and I do consider that to be now that i've been doing this for so long that is not i know eventually our bodies will break down and we won't be able to carry that with us anymore the ability to overwhelm and and and, and submit somebody it's just you know aging bodies is what yeah. happens yeah. and but it's still you see police officers and i was i was so lucky to be able to help teach the police officers of the burlington police department jujitsu because yeah. every, every once in a while i would get to see i saw their i saw the shift in their confidence i got to see Occasionally, I would get to see the footage, the Axon footage, or I'd see the CCTV footage, and I'd watch these officers not just be able to complete and and safely take take detainees to the ground and yep. and control them or bring them to the point of negotiation, yep. but also be able to to adapt in that moment because they could think clearly. Yep. Like I, I remember one officer in particular. I don't know if I can. I'll leave his name out for now, but yep. if you watch this, I'll know who he is. But. Yep. He was responding to a, to a DV outside of a, it was like the middle of the night outside of a, a little breakfast sandwich place. And he was holding one of these gentlemen, this gentleman, he was holding up against a wall and he starts to fight back. He hits the, the takedown that he drilled a million times. He hit it perfectly. He moved to a position of advantage, which was, he moved to a, a strong mount position. And then usually like he, and he, he gassed the guy out and the other person was, was lining up to try to like kick him in the face. And yep. he immediately, while controlling him, just takes a taser out and was like, nope, and yeah. just back off. And I was like, that's <laughs> like, dude, look at that. That was so cool to yeah. see that. So you still have these skills that you still get that matter for that job yeah. for, for police officers. Yeah. So there's, those are the two biggest things that, that I think are, are what, what jujitsu in particular brings to people. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I, I, I always think back on my training with one one of the original UFC fighters, Jason DeLucia. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know, when they were still bare knuckle fighting UFC and he 
I remember I was training with him and <laughs> we used to train and every time I'd come in an hour early before class, because with him, especially when he's there, you go right in the mat with him and you want to talk about being humbled in a microsecond with him. We were doing a simple judo exercise where you just kind of wrap up and you're feeling your way around, you know, to be able to do the throw. You're kind of shifting weight. You're kind of yep. going through this process, which I loved because to me, it's like, all right, I can even do this with my eyes closed because depending on how the body moves, I can counter yeah. it yeah. and do the throw. And of course, he kicked my ass every time because it's like it's his job. Jason, he's a professional. It's, it's, yeah, he's yeah. A, he's a professional. But but I learned so much. A, again, that that's what people don't realize that is really humbling, and you learn a lot. It's from the mistakes you made during practice, right? During during your training, you're gonna make mistakes, right? And it's something don't be afraid of, right? Just because you're brand new to the combatives world or BJJ or judo or whatever it might be, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get your ass handed to you. Right. If you walk in with a certain ego, your ego, <laughs> just yeah. see you later. You know, and that's what one thing I love about the martial arts world is that that ego driven type individual doesn't last yeah. because they get humbled right away. Yeah. You know, I remember, you know, back uh, when I was a brown belt and I would get partnered with like, you know, brand new guy. Because again, yeah, the more advanced guys, we tend to be able to, you know, not put as much power. Or set up the new guy so he can do a throw. You're, con you're you know, controlling yourself. We, we control. you know how to. Exactly. But then you get these egomaniac white belts who will walk in and just go 100%. And you're like. They think that's how every night is. They yeah. think that's how it all is. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, okay, now now it's my turn. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and it's not like I'm pissed or whatever, but it was to teach a lesson in humility. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it was hard lesson for people to learn like that. But those who stick with it, Learn it quick and realize that this, yeah, it's not about your ego. It's not about, you know, being better than another fighter or anything like that. It's about yourself. It's, I'm just about to say, it's yeah. completely about yourself. Yeah. It's about being better, that 1% better than the, you were yesterday. Like exactly. We were just talking about. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's tough for people to have that emotional IQ to really understand that it's, it might be their ego holding them back from getting them onto the mats and, and, and microdosing that adversity and feeling that discomfort of I'm going to fail in, I'm going to lose a fight. Yep. And that, especially for, for guys who are in jobs that might require, require yep. some degree of narcissism. Yep. That's a very difficult pill to swallow. Like I think about, you know, military police officer, when you got to go into a room and you got to, when you got to go and you have to do your job it is you. You are the guy. Yeah. No one else in the fucking universe yeah. can do this but you. And then, and that's necessary for you to do that job and survive and go home at the end of the day. Yeah. But when you want to go work on yourself and get better at doing that, you're going to have to realize that that narcissism is, or that degree of ego is going to get in your way because you're going to go up against professionals and they're, yeah. they're going to be better than you. And they are going to bring you to that point you're going to end your brain's going to enter that, that primal mode of I'm fighting now. Just like you said, you're new yep. and you go a hundred percent and you're going to lose. Yep. You're going to fail and you're going to ask yourself why. Yeah. And your ego will be like, you know, you can just, you can just say, you know, you got something else going on yep. next time. There's a class, just say there's something else going on. Yeah. You got to go to this. You got to go to that. You know, you don't need to make time for that. Look at how big and strong you are. All you need is strength. Yeah. And you start giving yourself these excuses. And, and one of the things I always think about is if you're, if your test and I always, you know, like I said, I always wonder this, especially, especially with, with officers is that if you if you're, if your test as to whether or not you're good at a fight is simply that you haven't been beaten to death yet or killed, then technically you're undefeated. You're yeah. undefeated yeah. until the day that you're, that, that you're not. And yeah. at that point you're dead. So what does it matter? Yeah. So, I mean, I always, it was always kind of heartbreaking for me, for example, like I'd see or I'd hear about officers that would be on the department or on other departments out in the world. And they, and I'll see them on like Gracie breakdowns and stuff where the officer is getting their, I mean, they're in great physical shape and they're getting their, they're getting handled. They're getting smeared across the ground, like, yeah. like, like jelly across toast. Yeah. And, it, and it's, and then they still don't do anything about it. Yeah. They don't, they don't continue to try to improve themselves. They go back to the weight room, they lift yeah. more weights, but I mean, it's, 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 it's tough. It's tough when you have people come in and it's, you have to help, 
be a good ambassador to make sure they understand that this is part of the program. Yeah. This, this failing, this yeah. failure and pain is part of the program and you need to learn how to welcome that with open arms because you will someday face some person who is going to be, they're going to, they might know everything you know right now, but they're going to be 5% stronger Yep. and then it's done. Then they got you. Yep. And so if you're not working on yourself, especially if you're like a police officer where most of the times you're going to be putting your hands on someone, most of the time you're, they're not going to be swinging for the fences to, yep. to take your block off. They're going to be like, oh, all right, fine. All right, yep. Okay, fine. But the second you do that, that, that's a grappling match. The scale of intensity just isn't at the point where you're overwhelmed and you consider it assault yet. Like, yeah. or, or they're resisting arrest. It's yep. just, okay, we're grappling. I'm grabbing you. This yep. is technically grappling. Yep. And that can change in an instant. Like oh, I'm yeah. sure you've had as an officer many times you like, you grab that and you feel that, that and, tension. Oh, yeah. And you're and like, I'm here, like, here we, we go. go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's my first Don't thought. Relax, I'm like, relax, relax, yeah, relax. Exactly. You exactly. say that, relax, relax, yep. relax, and, relax. And what's interesting is, again, we, we're so automatic in the, what we do is the minute I put my hand on and they're already tensed up and I'm already doing my moves that I want to yep. do yep. just to prepare, <laughs> yep. just to get ahead of it. Because again, just like we feel amygdala hijack, that guy feels in amygdala hijack too. Yeah. yeah. Like that's a human response. Now you're both in that fight or flight mode, but who's going to get the best of you, right? Are you going to allow him to get the best of you or are you going to allow yourself to bring yourself back down? Again, again, uh, you know, I think uh, I shared with you one of Masashi's quote is, if you wish to control others, control yourself. So, yeah, I wrote that down. Yeah. You know, so, I was actually bringing that up. Oh, I, yeah. I was going through a lot of your stuff and I was finding all these quotes from one of Masashi and I was like, yeah. I'm going to add some of these to my Oh, my yeah, yeah. List. Well, yeah, well like, that's the thing. Like, like I, I, because it makes so much sense to me is you see, you know, and, and I'm sure you've seen it. You take two cops, go into a situation. One cop is not technically really in control of themselves versus the other cop who is in control of themselves has that confidence. And you could literally, the room picks up on it right away. I mean, I've, I've again, not to like pat myself, but I've gone into situations where complete pandemonium chaos, right? Whether it's a large fight, whatever it might be. And the minute I show up and I step out of the cruiser, you could see everyone else like, oh shit. He's in charge. Yeah, he's in charge. Like, you know, that command presence that we call. And I find that, you know, a lot of officers that I know at my PD who train in jujitsu, martial arts, walking, whatever it might be, they have a different level of confidence when they go to a call. They have a different level of cognitive abilities to be able to pick things up and process and process in an instant because that's the thing with correctly too. Exactly. And and that's the thing with with putting yourself in that again, you know, I always say get comfortable. I think I said that actually when we were training here, when I was training those cops here, where I said, listen. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. You're going to be uncomfortable. And one of the things I love doing is when I train is I force cops to be put in uncomfortable positions purposely. So whether we're about to go on the ground, I will basically set them up like as if they were just about to get choked out and like figure it out. How are you going to get out of this? And it's amazing to see those who don't train where I, you know, one, you got to have really good uh, role players, right? Those who can really control the match, if you want to call it. And those role players understand their mission. I was like, listen, you know, just give them a hard time. Don't choke them out. Don't do anything like that. Just make them work. He, make them work. He has to work. Yeah. He has to work to get. If it's those, lazy, then you, you get yeah, into exactly. a good position and exactly. just make it worse. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed is those who don't train revert to deadly force like that. It's, it's, if, if, if every problem looks like a nail, you're always going to use it. Exactly. Hammer. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is, though, what we've learned in the, you know, in martial arts world, not everything is a deadly situation, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, I could be getting choked out, whatever, but guess what? I'm able to get out of it and move around. Now I'm no longer in that deadly situation. That's what, that's what I love about, you know, training with somebody else. Me personally, I've always loved training with somebody bigger than me. That's the, the, I fucking you love have it. To. <laughs> you have to. You absolutely have exactly. to. Exactly. If it doesn't work on the big, strong guy, it Exactly. This guy I used to train with all the time, Chris, he was a monster. Big fucking dude. And man, he <laughs> would make me work and his punches would hurt. You know, like, you punched, you oh my God. Oh, he, one time he clocked me so good in the face <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you got me, you know? Yeah. But there's a reason behind it. It's because I want to train on a guy like that. Because one day, which most times I do, I face people like that, yeah. right? Especially whether they're going through like a mental health crisis, whatever it might be, they're big, they're parasympathetic as 
fucking going through the roof. And there's real adrenaline. And there's fighting. Exactly. Not- and we all know body mechanics. Well, an um, arm is going to move no matter how big you are a certain way. Yeah. Right. And if you're panicked and never trained certain skills, you're not going to be able to overpower a guy who's going through some sort of crisis safely. Mm-hmm. Right. You're going to be in that panic mode, get your baton out and you start striking. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's getting more and more, 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 yep. you know, versus, you know, where I've done it before, where I take someone to the ground and I just hold them. And I'm like, calm, breathe. Yeah. Like, you know, we're done. Yeah. Like, we're not fighting. Yeah. This isn't, this is, it can get worse for you. Yep. But right now I'm in control and I'm not going to let that happen unless you force it to happen. Yeah. One of the first things I go over with, with when we're teaching police officers or even teaching self-defense, especially women's self-defense is yep. the positions where you find where you want to start striking and what that tells your opponent when you do. Yep. Like, I like to, when, when we were teaching police officers stuff, we would like to forecast the answers. So we, we know what they're most common people that, that, you know, you like, maybe I'm in a bad position and it's like, okay, what would I do here? What would I do here? Like yep. maybe go for my gun. I always go for the gun. <laughs> I shoot him and he's dead and I, you know, and now I'm, you know, kind of fucked up, but yeah. Hey, I'm alive. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, all right, well, here's why you wouldn't want to do that. Or striking, for example, it's yep. like, maybe I go strike him. But problem is like, what did I just tell this guy? If we weren't striking yet and I swing and I miss, yeah. what did I just tell this guy? Yeah. It's okay to strike. Yeah. It's okay. We're striking's now on the table. We can start punching each other now. And yeah. That just, and now I just escalated things and I didn't yeah. have the position to do that. So yeah. it's, there's such a, there's such a fascinating science to understanding the, the like, there's like a, there's like a, a intelligence in fighting oh, yeah. that exists, a fight yeah. IQ. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have that. They yeah. don't, they don't possess that. And to know when is the, when is the right time to pull my pistol? When is the right time to get to, to decide I'm going to fight? Yep. I and mean, I really like that about, about having been able, as I built this here, I've been able to very closely observe how the firearms instructors here work. And it's, it's very, there's so many similarities to, to training in a martial art. That it's, and I, and I brought this up with them before. Yeah. I was like, you guys know you're, you're martial artists. You guys are teaching a martial art and they're, and I see some of them that I can see like the, like there's a shift being like, oh yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. Yes. Yeah. Technically it's yeah, I guess it's a martial art, I guess. Yeah. And they, they, they see it and I'm, and I'm like, yes, I know. I know you see it. I have this very, very firm vision that there's, I believe what's the number, like 42% of adults, 42% of adults in the United States, approximately 88 million people own a gun. Yeah. And 2.95 million people in the United States train jujitsu, I believe is the number. And, and there's more across all martial arts Yeah, more across, but I'm willing to bet that if I asked both of those groups, the question, who is responsible for your safety? If someone preys upon you. I'm willing to bet they would they would both say I am. Yeah. I'm responsible for that. I I train to prepare for this. This is something I have I have an answer for that problem. Yep. And so I think there's a huge crossover that can happen here where we can start taking a a massive martial art with the 88 million people, 88 million plus people that have a culture war being waged against it. Yep. And we can take the concept of martial arts which has there is no culture war against martial arts no. there's it's growing if anything you see yep. ufc's growing and bellator and one championship yep. Yep. and self defense you know uh, physical self defense is showing up i think there's this huge opportunity for us to start getting the nation if not the whole world to start looking at at firearm ownership as a martial art and begin to to start to shift the the way we the way people that might not understand yeah to look at it as such. Yeah. And we can do that. And I think this place is, is going to be ground zero for that. Well, um, that's, that's what I see. I mean, you know, just talking to some of your instructors, even when, when I was out here training and the way they present themselves and the way they talk about weapon manipulation and the mortar skills and all that stuff, it's, it's, which I could see how, how you see it is. Yeah. That's identical to the martial arts. Like when we talk about grapples, when we talk about, you know, shifting your weight a certain way in order to affect a hip throw or even how you land, right? You know, when we're training, we practice break fall. All right, how, how you break your fall? Yeah, you got to put your hand, you know, slam on the mat, you know, just to ease that throw. But that's that's what I find. So I see what you're saying about how with even uh, firearm ownership, having that as a martial art, because it gives it a deeper meaning, right? To be a firearms owner. 
And I do, I do like that a lot because it's true because you could tell the individuals who are dedicated to that art, i.e. the gun, how well they are versed in that firearm or how they even carry themselves throughout life. It's because they, to me, they know and understand the power that they possess. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that's something we learned in the military early on. I mean, especially once you go to war, yeah, you're like, God damn, you, you got pretty much the power of God mm -hmm. in your hands, yeah. right? Whether the might of the U.S. It's, military it's, down to the M4. Yeah. It's the pinnacle of individual violent technology yeah. is a firearm. It's precision. It's a precision-made instrument that is designed for death. And we, as if we're applying a martial arts attitude, and I love the way they describe this here. I, I, in, in one of our, in our classes in this place, they – Everyone's always like, when is the right time to use a gun? And the general answer, and I love this, is that when it can be used to save a life. And I think about the martial arts aspect that these are precision-made instruments, the pinnacle of individual violent technology, and they only they should only be used. They, they're, they're used to kill in the purpose of saving a life. Yeah. And I, I really, really, really like that approach. And I that's like something that, that I think I think – we can start to shift people's idea that this is not just some that owning a gun is not just some luxury thing for for people it's something you should be trained in and you should understand and you should 100% be practicing and forever pushing yourself towards growing in yeah and and and, and understanding what that means for you as a person to have that remarkable power yeah to be able to 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 be to be responsible with that. Yeah. And this is a, this is one of those places where I think they take that very seriously. I, I like They teach like you how to they teach you even whether you're, you're a grandma that's never shot before in her life or you're some 20 year SF vet. Like yeah. these, these guys here, the, these aren't just black belts. The guys that teach here, they're like they're red belts in this stuff. They, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what I always say. To watch them teach. Yeah. That's what I always say. I mean, that, that's one thing I picked up on is they're so good at just, even the little things, placement on your of the trigger finger, like you know stuff like that, just the very very small minuscule stuff that could make a difference in how you shoot. Same thing with the martial arts, the very minuscule pinky or yeah. you know ring finger, whatever placement you put your hand for to get ready for that grapple is very very important. And just like firearm, where we battle drill, battle drill practice, you know, changing the mag or even transition drills with a rifle. Well, that's, you're doing the same thing in the martial arts where you transition from the throat to now you're on the ground. Now you got to transition to something else. Yeah. It's about, and it's like even martial arts has its own style of equipment. Like yeah. we, yeah, we work in geese. You want to have a good gi to grab onto and yep. move around. You want to make sure you have like good equipment. You Like, do you have to understand your equipment and how it works and how can you improve? I just got this, I was telling you about this earlier, the, this, there's a guy that works here and he started this company yep. called Carbided Grips. It's. I love the entrepreneurial spirit of this guy. And yeah. and since he took off with this thing, it's been like, <laughs> I haven't been able to find the opportunity to get my gun in, but I finally did. Okay. And I just got these, the awesome grips to be able to, to be able to train with. Cause I'm okay. starting, as I'm starting to train out on the ranges, I'm getting, breaking a sweat. Yeah. My hands are getting dirty. Yep. This guy has this remarkable recipe for his, for the firearms he works on. Oh, awesome. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I actually, do you have one to show? Or yeah, you, well, I, was, yeah. I was shooting this morning. I was, yeah. I was, I was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring it over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, bring it over. I'd love to see it. It's, it's, it's very. No, it is, it is phenomenal, man. It just, man, this group just seals right to you. Oh wow, it's phenomenal, I dude. I, I, so I actually a little fun hobby for myself. I, I like to, I, li I like to paint mod. I like to, they if they want to see it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carbide grips. That guy kills it, man. I, I have a hobby on the side. I like to. This is so cool. I like to paint models. I like to like build and paint models. Yeah. And one of the things I'll always do looking at other people's work is I like to look at line work because yeah. I like to see, it's not just like, okay, yeah, it's, just, it's sandy and it feels good. I look deep into the grooves. I look into the recesses, yeah. the textures, and I try to find like, okay, did he, did he go over the line? Did yeah. he get this guy? And he puts out videos of his stuff like every other week he's built, he's doing some of their build yeah. and I'll, I'll sit there and I'll watch that video multiple times and I'll look for I'll look for wherever he may have made a mistake. I don't find one, man. This guy takes so much pride. Well, again, you, you know, you perfect, you perfect the, uh, the skill set, right? So, yeah, what I'll do is after uh, done the show notes, I'll add his website and stuff like that if people want to order. 
It, does he yeah. have that? Yeah. Does he have a website and all that? Yeah. Yeah. I think he has an Instagram. Yeah. I'm certain he has. It. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. We'll, we'll add that to the show notes that it's way so uh, people, good. but it's all this equipment that like, as I've been here and you get to see the experts who take their job seriously and they, it's just like a martial artist. Like I need to understand like my equipment is my hands, my mind, my body. I have to train in it. I have to understand it and I have to help it grow in the same way that I have to like the G10 grips that that 320 AXG Legion came with fantastic, but I can, I can do more. Yeah. I can do more yeah. and I can, I can make it better. And it's my responsibility. It's my primal responsibility to secure my own survival in this world. Yeah. I should continue to work on myself Yeah, mentally, physically, emotionally. Yeah. And, and that's the thing I think people don't understand with, with that type of mindset is it's, it, it is about that. It, it's more working internal. That way the external doesn't bother you as much. We'll call it, we'll, we'll tell you, you know, we'll put it that way. Or if you're able, you know, as a, as a cop, you go into a situation and I mean, did you, I don't know, there was this good video of a couple cops. I think it was at some parade or something, a fight broke out and man, they were able to handle themselves where one cop was about to get tackled. He sprawled. Got, he? took the guy down yeah, oh yeah took the guy down to the ground and <laughs> and you look at it though not once did the cop throw a punch or anything like that he just took him down and the kid knew fight's over i'm, out, I'm over I'm, yeah i'm outmatched yeah like yeah. i'm done there's a fire there's a, it's a, it's a whole like being in a gunfight you get yep. that fire superiority the yep. same thing exists in physical altercation yep like if if you are clearly outmatched, yep. you're 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 going to be overwhelmed. Your OODA loop is going to be fucked up, and yep. you're going to be running and on the defense. Even if you're on the ground, if you're in a striking match, being pushed into a corner, same rules apply. Yeah, and that guy sounds like he got that fire superiority. Oh yeah, I mean it was, and his partner jumped in too to help him because somebody came from behind the cop and i loved it his partner just literally did like a head sweep type thing and just threw him to the ground <laughs> and it again it i haven't was, seen it oh you got i'll i'll share yeah. it with you uh yeah. i'll share it with you. It, it was an amazing like i'm like oh these guys owned like a crowd of 15 20 people you know <laughs> just that's it man all done it's you know like they're working together and they know what they're doing exactly. this is an opponent that is clearly they are clearly prepared yeah they came here, they're a hard target, and yeah. I might be an easy one. Exactly. So maybe I just won't fight. Maybe yeah. I just won't get involved. I, when I was working as a bouncer, there'd be moments like that too, where it'd be like me and another guy, and you know, the place is packed with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, and a big yeah. fight breaks out, but you go in there and you laid it, you you establish that fire superiority, and you, and like there's space, and you're able to do a little jujitsu, and it clearly looks like you know what you're doing. Because you move and then stop in an instant because you know what positions to get to and where you need to stop. And that person is on the ground looking like they're completely being hit by a tidal wave of, yeah. of physical momentum. Yeah, that that sends messages out. So th to me, it's it's, it's right. So there's this thing that I I, I wrote a, I wrote about it in in uh, on Havoc Journal. I call it psychological ambush, right? Where you fuck up the other guy's OODA loop yeah. purposely because it it makes me think of. So this one quick story I had. This mechanic shop, this is several years ago when I was still on patrol, this mechanic shop, you know, the owner is calling to report that his credit card was used by one of his employees. Now, this employee is a big dude, right? He rugged, big guy, has quite the history in terms of criminal, like very violent criminal history. And you're like, ooh, all right, this is a good one. So did the legwork, was able to catch like, you know, camera footage of him going into different stores and stuff like that, buying gas, whatever. So, yeah. Got the probable cause, got the arrest warrant, all that stuff. Now comes obviously moment of truth. I'm gonna go, you know, and he had no idea this was going on in the background because it was investigation stuff like that. And I've been in contact with the owner, so I asked the owner, "Hey, when is he working again?" Oh, he'll be working. We'll say Monday. Okay, I'll be. I'm gonna head down Monday, and we're gonna take him into custody. So owner already knew this was happening. The mechanic had no idea. I mean, I spoke to the mechanic a handful of times, but nothing really that would say, "Yeah, you're." you're in trouble type thing, you know? So I go down there and this guy, again, big dude. And one, I, I put myself in a bad position. I knew right away because the owner of the store was like, oh yeah, you can use my office. I'm like, oh, sure. okay. I didn't, wasn't really thinking much of it. One, 
well, one, I was thinking, all right, let's get him out of the mechanic shop because there's plenty of tool weapons, weapons, plenty of weapons. So I was going to just have him come outside to talk to me and then take him into custody. And at the time, my partner was on his way. So I had I had some time to kind of kill. So I go into this office. I'm like, shit. Trapped. Yeah. Trapped, small area, only one door in and out. Exactly. And I'm like, damn it. So, And he was at the end because he walks in. He's at, you know, he's. At the door, I'm like, God damn it. All right. I don't like where I'm at. So I start talking to the guy. And what I start doing is kind of moving around the desk. And he's moving the other direction. I'm like, oh, well, we're going to keep doing this. Yeah, I get myself to that door. Yeah, I get myself to that door. So I get myself to that door. And he realized he's at a disadvantage now. He's like, he's trapped now. He's trapped now. <laughs> yeah. And I took him into custody. No, pro- Like after that, no problem. Because that. To me, with him, I mean, I, I, I spoke to some Green Berets about it just to kind of get there, like, you know, what the hell was that? And he's like, dude, what you did was like predator and prey circling each other or predator and predator circling each other. And the other guy realized that you just beat him psychologically mm-hmm. because you put him in a position he didn't want to be in versus you staying in that position. Dude, the mind is so fascinating like that. Yeah. I, I've. I've paid more and more attention to this. And I've been, I've been reading a lot about like the psychology that goes into not just, not just like combative scenarios, but how our brain is, it's this thing that's designed to keep us alive. Yep. And it's always, it's always that, that amygdala is always scanning for threats. Always. And, and it's also this thing that's like, it steers us away from pain and suffering, which is how our OODA loop gets fucked with, which is yep. why when you microdose it, yep. you start getting comfortable with it. And it's not as scary to be in that unpleasant scenario. No, like because, I'm sure he had no idea you were freaking out a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm sure exactly. he didn't see that. I'm sure no, he didn't like, see that. Just walking around, just yeah. looking at him. I'm sure it was too. But in your yeah, heart, oh yeah, like, dude, my heart rate was up. But you, you know, because trained. But yeah. you trained, so you knew that feeling, and yeah. you're like, okay, I'm gonna. And he and you probably saw like he's shifting position, and then yeah. he folded because he doesn't microdose adversity. He doesn't push himself. He's used to being big, yeah, and that scares people. Yeah. And he's crazy. He gets what he wants, and those are his thing. You. Yeah. Not as big as he was, yep. but you train for it. Yep. You're comfortable with pain. Yep. And even you know how to, f- you know, when you touch it, yep. it's going to be okay. Like yep. in your gut, you yep. knew it was going to be okay. Like yep. I can touch this fear and I can still do my job and I can still make decisions. I love that shit, man. <laughs> it's such a fascinating thing. Well, that, well that's what it is. It's, it's because I, I myself am always fascinated with, with how someone perceives the world, even like even perception. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and for <laughs> this guy, his, his perception was shit. I just lost. <laughs> right. And, and you could tell even with him when I was taking him into custody, I mean, he was still like tense, but he, he may have been feeling out his like, what, yeah. what could I get away? What can, I, what can I get away with? Exactly, and you, and you had the advantage. Yeah, you exactly. Five superiority. Exactly, yeah. and and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> like to have, but again, though, that comes with training and skills, right? To have that, to have that confidence and that superior. You know, you're you're like superior to this individual because, yeah, you're right. This individual, he got around the world by violence and you know being arrested, a bunch of you know all kinds of shit. So to him. He's not as adver- – he's he, he has that adversity to withstand pain, but he was always the guy, like you said, wins every fight, never really fought somebody probably who's skilled versus now, oh, shit. But there's that read. Yeah. That read when you look at someone and you're like, this guy's confident and he's not scared of me. Yeah. It's very fucking simple and very, very real. It like is. I had a situation when I was working at – I was working at – I was working at a bar in downtown Burlington and it was just me and another guy on and we had this dude who – he was – such a pain in the fucking ass, <laughs> but he, he, he had calmed down. So we, we had, we had, we had like banished him from coming to the club for like six months. Yeah. And then he came back. He's like, look, I'm sorry. Everything's cool. Okay, cool. You know, he comes in, everything's going fine. And of, of all the times for something to happen, a whole bunch of, and this rarely happened at this bar. But it was a bunch of 81s that showed up. So it was a bunch of Hells Angels show Ooh, up. Okay. And it, the, the thing with these Hells Angels, they were, they were working with alongside another motorcycle club that I think was looking to patch over. Yeah. And I think they were, there was a bunch of dudes in there that were wearing prospect okay. clothes, prospect stuff, but they looked fucking weathered. Yeah. Of like Hells Angel prospect. And, and, and I was told on the side, like, yeah, those guys are actually the top dogs. They're just trying to get attention off of them out in yeah. public. And I think they're here to observe the new recruits that might be patching over. And I'm like, 
fuck. Yeah. And so I've got this one dude <laughs> yeah. who is like, he thinks he's this gangbanger. Yeah. And then I have, there was like nine or 10 HA and, and this other club patching over. And I was like, oh, Jesus, fuck. It's me and this other guy. On. Yeah. 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 And, and we end up having, like, they end up getting into it. And me and this other guy, we were both heavily training in jujitsu and gets into, there was an altercation by the bathroom. They start chirping at each other that were, that were chirping with this, this gang banger and they wave over the other, like the, the, the like the new joins or, or the yeah. prospects of HA, not yeah. the actual, but like not the, not the fake prospects that we yeah. think were the, the top dogs, but yeah. the actual ones come up. So they start moving over. And then as soon as they see the HA start coming over, they start fighting this guy <laughs> two on one. Oh, yeah. And me and this other guy jump in and we just pounce on all three of them. And, and like, we hem them all up. Yeah. We get them all control. They're all wearing big, thick leather, leather coats. So we yeah, yeah, were yeah. able to control them. And by the time HA get there, like the bartenders have started to clear, they're moving through the crowd. People are getting the hell out of the way, but we're so in control of the situation. We took the top position right away. Yeah. We weren't fucking hurting anyone. Yeah. And like, they all start moving up on us, but they, they, they kind of kept their distance. I think they weren't ready for the level of intensity. We brought it to that quickly yeah. and how quickly we got the, the situation under control physically. Yeah. And they, that little bit of time of hesitation where they showed up to the scene this wasn't, these guys were not HA. And uh, like, I, I feel like we, we got, we got, we just by the skin of our teeth made it in. And, but, be, but because we could get control of that situation, everything started to calm back down. The HA guys were like, all right, oh yeah, these guys fucked up. And then we were like, we were just, and then we were able to talk them things back down. Yeah. Nobody was hurt. Yeah. Everyone just had a little bit of hurt pride. They were on the ground. They couldn't like both on neon belly. One dude was literally just like back the way that the gang banger was like, vanishing into the crowd by this point and so we were like hey this is what went down your buddy is here like they had a little bit too much to drink hey man we're just trying to make money we're trying to feed our family and then we were able to like talk to them because yeah. they, they didn't come over and see punches yeah flying and blood spraying all over the place which would have sent them through the oh roof. yeah oh yeah it was that jujitsu that control over our mind that control over the situation yeah and everything started to to it 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 just the, the sizzle you know, it slowly turned down to a simmer yeah. and then it finally calmed down. So when you, when you were talking about this, I was, I was like, Oh shit. I know. I remember this one moment yeah. when you were talking about that one huge guy yeah. that boxed you in and yeah. you were like, actually, yeah. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Even though you could very easily be in charge. Yeah. You clearly think I'm in charge yeah. because I know how to feel this feeling and you're not as comfortable with it. Yeah. And that, that came to my mind. I was like, ah, yeah, this one time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one I, mean, time, I mean, that could have been really bad. Well, that's the thing. I trade for this. Well, that's the thing because we it, eventually I got the edge. Exactly. I mean, y you take for granted when you train a lot and get yourself uh, skillful and you're learning every day and every day you're, you're, you're bettering yourself because, you know, so we have a couple cops at, at my job where they took one eight hour BJJ type class. And I, rem I remember next to that roll call, you know, like, yeah, you're going to keep going or what? And, you know, they were like, nah, 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 I don't need that. I mean, eight hours is enough. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> and my thought is this it officer, he's very ego driven type guy. I'm like, his ego got bruised. Yep. I bet you that he got fucking this? plastered, which is to me, I love like fucking put me to work and yeah. you know, you'll, you'll be my friend. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, me cause I get it actually. Am. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what I like. I like a challenge like that. And with him, he did not like it obviously. And I'm like, yeah, but you're missing out of what, what you're actually doing. I said, you're getting yourself there. I was like an eight hour introductory class is nothing. I mean, I, I wouldn't say eight hour. It was no, probably like a it's, four hour. It's but. not going to fully, it's just like a four hour use of force class in the, yeah. uh, for police departments. It's yeah. not going to be enough. You have to keep doing it. It's yeah. just like, you can't go to the range once and like, you can't go to the range of the academy and being like, I know, I now know how to shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Until I got a qual in a year and then I'm like, oh fuck, I freak out for a little while. No, you got to keep on it. Exactly. It's your job. Exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating that you're bringing basically everything we've talked about kind of bringing that mentality into the the combative side over at at sig and really hone in on people's you know abilities to persevere right they're like we have an amazing resilience system in us as as humans you know we've been through yeah. a lot of shit and to me combatives 
really hone in that primal instinct because it's so different than punching a punching bag. It's so different than, yeah, I could throw weights around, strength training, all that shit. But until you step into the ring with someone, yep. it's a whole different. Yep. And you know they're whole, coming. And you know they're coming. They're coming. Exactly. Yeah, that competitive. That's why I like to compete as well. Yep. And, and it's, you get, cause that's where you're allowed to touch. That's where you're allowed to play at that level. Yeah. And it's okay. If, if you get hurt, that's part of the program. Yeah. If you're in training and you're getting fucking hurt, that's too far. Exactly. Training, you, you should be, you no one's, no one's trying to win training. No. You win competitions. Exactly. You don't win training. You just, you go to training to suck yeah. and then get better at that. Exactly. But yeah, it's a very different, it's a, it, people don't like touching that. I mean, and, and it's not totally, it's not, it's literally just how we're designed. Our brains are designed to steer away from hardship when really it's the hardship. It's, it's the hard road. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah, it's the hard road. <laughs> you have to, you have to, if you want to, if you want to be better at fighting, if you want to be better at lifting weights, what do you do? You go lift weights. Yeah, exactly. You don't say, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I'll get better at lifting weights by, I'll lift this five pound weight a bunch of times, like 50 times and I'll put, and then I'm done. No, yeah. you go and you push yourself. You create hypertrophy and you, you create pain yep. and then you get stronger from that pain. Yep. And some of the best things that come in life come through pain. Oh yeah. And it's, it's that, it's that pain that like referring to that gentleman you, you, you previously worked with who, who avoided that because he got hurt and that was, and his brain says, I got hurt. We don't go, we don't want this again. Yeah. I don't want that fucking Fuck that. I'm not coming back. Yeah. And, and I've seen that too. I've seen and in jujitsu. It's, it's, it, you, you see that too all the time because it's so much more in that, that primal loss. Yeah. That primal sense of failure is so much more intimate when you have to look someone else in the face and say, I submit myself to you. Please have mercy. Yeah. And if you, if all you do is work out in the gym all the time, you're stacked full of muscle, you're fucking you're yeah. shredded, you know? If you look like that and, and, and you, you put in all that work and you're able to push through that style of perseverance and then some 110 pound sorority girl chokes you out, <laughs> like you're not going to, it's going to be tough to come back. Stand oh, up from uh, that. oh yeah. I mean, I mean, so I went to Bakersfield with my training program and trained 10 other officers and we had this one officer, he, he bodybuilder, like again, ripped all nine yards, everything, you know, even had the perfect hair. I think yeah. I called him like Tom Cruise or something like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, perfect hair and all that shit. But the minute we put him into scenarios where he had to go hands on, he got humbled quick because he didn't have enough gas in the tank yeah. to handle that. So, and, and that's what I always say with training, training comes. Yeah. You could train to be a long distance runner. You can train wind sprints, all that good shit. But do you have enough after that foot chase to finish it? Yeah. Right. I love that about the uh, the program that you did with BJJ Cops. When they, everyone was hooked up and they were just, uh, and the, I remember like we had to hold that, that we just had to hold one oh, yeah, yeah, over yeah. your head yeah. and the other dude had to hit 20 calories and you just had to sit there and you yeah. and you pointed out, you're like, the other guy is in a fight yeah. and he's going to keep fighting. And in the simulation, it's fighting yeah. until you get to your 20 calories. That's you showing up on scene and yeah. then you're going to fight too. Yeah. Yep. So it's like, that's the real. Yeah. You guys did such, you guys were very, very skilled with that. I'm really excited to have you guys back. Guys. Yeah. No, it, it, again, us, us coming back. I mean, that's a later conversation, but, but in order to, again, like putting all that together is to me is a holistic approach to training mm -hmm. versus, you know, just the one skill set, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's great to have the skill set in firearms. It's great to have that skill set and that mindset when you're, you know, take on this, this piece of metal that literally life and death is right there and you're able to dedicate your time to it. But there's other aspects to not just the firearm, to being human, mm -hmm. right? Being able to be skillful at combatives or being, I mean, any sort of skill, you need to develop it over time, right? And in order, again, to me, I train the way I, I explain it. I train for that final fight. Like, it may come one day or it may not. I don't know. But guess what? I'm training for it yeah. because one day who I'm facing is me, right? I'm here with you, man. You know, we're on the same way. That's, like, that's, yep. that's my fear. If you want to call it is linking up with someone, a bad version. He of knows me. everything, you know, yep. Everything I know 5% better. Exactly. Yep. That's the guy I'm fighting. So when I have like, you know, I have a mirror in my gym 
and when I'm really fucking working and I say to myself, I'm like, fuck you, dude, let's go. Like, I need to be that much better. And those are the ones, unfortunately, you find with a lot of law enforcement officers, they don't have that sort of mindset where one day I'm going to face myself, yep. you know, and that, like you said, that twin doppelganger, whatever you want to call him, is that 5% better? He's just enough. Just, just enough. enough to kill you. Exactly. And he's coming. He's, yep. That moment is screaming through the universe right now. Exactly. Coming to you. It doesn't, every single human being has the worst day of their life yep. screaming through the universe, yep. headed their way. And yep. what are they doing to just be prepared for that? What are they doing physically to get ready for that? What are they doing mentally to prepare themselves for that? Yep. You know, for that, for that. For that collapse, are you going to be able to stand back up afterwards? Yep. Are you going to be able to fight? Like, like every day you put in the gym, like every day you put in the gym, every day you train, every day you go on the range, every day you educate yourself in how the mind works or in how the world works. That one person that you were going to meet up that would kill you, he only hurts you. Mm -hmm. And that one person who was going to hurt you, well, he only hurts you a little bit. That yep. person who was going to hurt you a little bit doesn't hurt you at all. And that yep. person who didn't hurt you at all. He completely cooperated. Yeah. And it's like every day you're, you're moving, you're climbing up that rung and exactly. you're putting people that might wish you that, that might be the, the, the harbinger of that terrible day. Yeah. They're moving down the ladder. They're moving down the ladder and you're moving past them and yeah. you're, you're developing this warrior, you know, mindset, this warrior philosophy that, you know, I'm not going to be that harbinger for someone else unless they come to do it for me. Exactly. I'm going to spread this kindness throughout the world. Yeah. I'm going to help enrich others that, that come near me. I'm going to be that warrior in a garden. Yeah. And, and that's why I love your, I love your product. <laughs> I love the podcast. I love everything. I'm really happy to be here today. It's yeah. Such an no, honor. it's, it's, um, it's great to be here ourselves. And I always like, you know, we're getting close to that time where I like to finish off the show with, Usually our guests would uh, give like a one piece of advice out to the, whether it's law enforcement, military, civilian world, like, you know, what advice or what sort of, what's something somebody can take with them that, you know, if they're working a shift tonight that for them to really think about in terms of, you know, BJJ or anything that you can think of that they'd want to take tonight just to think about. Oh, I shoot, man. There's so much. I, 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 pressure is pressure is a, is a privilege. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege to be able to be placed under some kind of pressure. I mean, something's expected of you and you should honor those moments that are going to be difficult because that's, what's going to, it's going to give you that story to tell, to share with others, to inspire other people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the whole pain through perseverance. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that. It's, it's our perseverance through pain. That's what it was. Perseverance, perseverance through pain. Perseverance <laughs> through pain. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it's, you, you have to, that what's on the other side is so wonderful. It really is wonderful. Like even for myself, like my story right now, when I'm trying to build here, like I am, I am tired all the time, physically, mentally, but it's not just because my flesh is weak. Doesn't mean the deeds that, that. I'm doing won't endure and yeah. won't be something pr someone else will be proud to inherit. Just like what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it's an on police officers that volunteer that, that, that stand up and, and help others. I want to be there for people on the worst day of their life. Firefighters, EMTs, you're tired, but the deeds, the deeds will endure. Yeah. The deeds will endure. There's a, a over at 22 more ox, the CEO, the, the owner, the founder, Dave Camposano, he always says deeds, not words. Yeah. yeah. So that's nice. Kind of thing that you know his motto at the bottom of his details yeah. you know deep, it's not talk it's, no it's not talk it's not about it's, talk it's don't about, talk about yourself exactly just do it it's, people will see it, it. now speak so much more exactly exactly and that that's what i always tell you know advisors i said well what do you want to do i want to do this well then do it yeah what's stopping execute. you yeah, execute yeah go go don't that's, that's why that's uh, like my battalion commander uh, over in iraq he always used to say he's like always on the attack even to this day he texts me you know after you know, we go back and forth <laughs> and he's like, ah, remember Saj, always on the attack. My, he my got old it. first starts the same way <laughs> yep. from, from the Marines. Yeah. yeah. First yep. starts always on the attack. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just execute. Do what you got to do. You know? So that's great. But, uh, Gavin, thank you so Thanks much. Me, this man. was yeah, awesome. This was really wonderful. Yeah. It was a great conversation, yeah. Yeah. man. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So everyone, uh, hope you got something out of this. Check out SIG, uh, Academy on their website for the announcement when, the uh, BJJ combative side kind of goes full launch. And, um, you know, 
feel free email us for any uh, comments uh, or suggestions or even yeah even if you have questions for Gavin you know forward them off to him and uh, and actually we could put your email address probably yeah, in the yeah. show notes we'll we'll add all that later that on sounds, that sounds cool to me. yeah all right man all right everyone well thank you for uh, joining us and uh, stay safe stay safe. Ian.